let's say that you have a new starter. How does that new starter learn the ropes, learn to work your way? Yeah, so one, I would say the, the there's one meta way of trying to answer that question, then there's a the very concrete way. So I'll start with the meta way, and that is really the things that we've talked about today of having a fairly similar looking type of infrastructure, having a shared infrastructure platform that everyone uses, um, and trying to make that platform great, like make it a really good product, and which is hard, but like we, we and we're not, we're far from perfect, but that's the that's the aim. Like we always want to simplify, make it easier to to use and onboard, and not just onboard, but also move in between in within the org or move to a different discipline. Like I, I used to be a backend developer, now I want to learn machine learning or whatever. Um, yeah. So that's what that's the meta aspect, and I think that's always been part of our culture since day one. To like, we think we're going to be growing as a company, so we need to make these things relatively easy. And then to talk more concretely, so one of the things that we do that I think has been maybe the single most powerful thing for us is that we have these things called golden pots. And I think most of our peer companies have something like this today. So it's basically a lengthy tutorial on how to build something at Spotify. So there's a back, uh, there's a golden path for backend, there's a golden path for data, for machine learning, for mobile development and whatnot. And it's essentially a it used to be a long Google Doc. Now it's a, a long backstage thingy where you go through the various steps of, you know, creating a backend service, connecting that to big tables, setting up your monitoring, operating that service. All of that is is you can step through. And part of starting at Spotify is that you go through a small uh, boot camp where you get to talk to a bunch of other people at Spotify and listen to people like myself drone on about what we do at Spotify. And then you go through at least one of the golden pots for whatever discipline you're going to be focusing on. Typically you will go through maybe one or two or three of them. And that's been a, for us been a very effective way of getting people up to speed on the, on the, on the basic stuff. And then for, at least at Spotify, you part of starting, you get assigned to a squad. So you end up in a, in a team, that is delivering on something, you get a buddy in that squad and you start working. Like we, one of the core metrics that we measure is the onboarding time for new engineers. So basically the time from you being hired to you having uh, shipped a certain number of changes into production. Like that's one of the core KPIs that we measure and we try to uh, reduce over time. So right now we're not growing quickly so now this is a less crucial metric for us but when we were in a heavy growth stage we tracked this very very closely and did you do things like pair programming or mentorship schemes to to bring to help help bring people on as well it's another thing that we, i've seen work well for some of those sorts of things we do do some amount of both pair pro programming and mob programming programming but it happens pretty organically wherever yeah. in the world they want to do that. I wouldn't say yeah. that it's very deeply built into our culture or something that we tell people explicitly to do, but it's, I would say it's become more and more popular organically and yeah. definitely happens. I would say it probably happens. I don't actually know if this is true. I'm going to be speculating a little bit. I think it, it more commonly happens as part of, developing something new rather than as an onboarding activity, but I, I might be wrong there. I, I, I'm not sure that that's entirely true. Yeah, interesting. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the side benefits that I've always seen with pair programming is, is that stabilizing effect of, of team culture as a way of using it as a tool to kind of you know, grow yeah. the team culture and, and spread it. Yeah, I've been at companies previously that were very heavy adopters of, of pair programming and were even in cases enforcing it. And I wouldn't say that was a bad thing, but I, I, I'm also not completely bought into that, that that, that is yeah. something you have to do. Like, I think, I think we could arguably do more of it at Spotify, both pair and mob programming, but mm -hmm. I also think it's, it, it is a tool to apply where it, where it makes sense rather than yeah. apply across the board. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering.
You can find full episodes on all your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.